Hi, my name is Nicole. Welcome to my channel, Travel to Money. In this video, I'll talk about deciding to travel the world with a friend and all of the exploring we did at our first location in Spain. If you are new here, I have created this channel to help you learn about how to travel, adventure, and have fun on the road to financial independence. I have spent the last few years traveling the world. I paid off a house in Spain, plus I have worked smarter and harder to help me move toward financial independence. I believe that the road to financial freedom can and should be fun. I hope that you'll subscribe and join me on this journey, no matter where you are starting from. In my last video, I talked about how I got a second job working and living at a boarding academy. I spent five months there and was able to pay off massive chunks of debt in that time due to having two salaries and not really having any living expenses. During that time, I met a new friend, a coworker from Portugal. We both had dreams of traveling the world and each had YouTube aspirations. Over time, we developed a plan for travel. She had to leave a few months before me due to visa limitations and headed back home to Portugal. I finished up my time at the second job and we both took off for Spain in March of 2019 to start off by visiting my home for six weeks. This would be my first time traveling to Spain without having a home in the US. I have some wonderful friends in Florida who are really more like family to me. They've always provided me with a place to come home to if I would be around for a while, and they let me keep a few of my sentimental bins of storage in their garage. Once I had sold that second house with all of my furniture in Florida, my life was instantly decluttered in a major way. On this trip, I would look to take as much as I could with me to Spain so that my house in Spain would become more of my home base. I go through this cycle over and over again in life. I love the idea of minimalism and anytime I declutter and really simplify, I love it. But eventually life changes in some way and I begin to let material things fill up my space again. I may never master this entirely, but I do strongly believe in a mostly minimalist approach. Once my friend and I settled on a date for meeting up in Spain, this is where the fun really begins for me. I love the process of planning a trip, finding cheap flights, deciding what to pack, and thinking strategically about the time. I had to get another international driver's permit, make sure my phone plan was all set, get my credit cards ready by sending travel notifications, and all sorts of other things like that. Like I said, I love this part of the process. It's all part of the anticipation leading up to a big trip. I took off for Spain in the early part of March 2019 and Barb flew in to meet me just a few days later. I absolutely love owning a home in Spain. It gives me a launching pad, not just to the rest of Europe, but Spain has so many incredible cities, beautiful mountain ranges, and the people really just know how to enjoy life. Some of our exploring would be right out the back door in the little town of Pago, walking the streets, hiking, or driving the mountain ranges around the city, or visiting natural springs. We also took day trips to Valencia for things like Fias, my favorite festival in the world that I'll tell you more about later. Plus, we spent plenty of the weekend days there, beginning at the Arts and Science Center and walking up the park through the old riverbed and just walking through the beautiful city. Alicante was another city we visited and came to love. It is amazing that it is just a two hour drive from Valencia, but it has a completely different vibe. There we visited the Santa Barbara Castle, an incredible sushi restaurant. And one day we went there and we took a catamaran ride for the day out to the island of Tabarca. On another long weekend, we made the drive down to Granada. There we met up with a friend of mine from the States and her parents who lived in Granada. They gave us a wonderful show of the city as we explored different sites and even tried tasting an orange off of one of the trees, which is not something that I would recommend. <laughs> On that same weekend in Granada, we took a bus ride up to Sierra Nevada Ski Resort. 
Sierra Nevada, not to be confused with the one in California, contains the highest point in Spain. And let me tell you, when we left Granada, the temperature was in the 60s Fahrenheit. By the time we got up the mountains, it was so cold that we literally would run from shop to shop because we were not prepared for that kind of weather. It was snowing and ice was just everywhere. If you haven't been to Spain before, I hope you're getting an idea of all it has to offer. Beautiful beaches? Check. Wonderful ski locations? Check. Walkable cities with fascinating history? Check. Scenic drives? Check. With plenty of outdoor activities like hiking and cycling, Spain has plenty for the outdoor enthusiast, and the weather is fairly mild. I've lived in humid places like Florida and dry places like Colorado, and I found that Spain is a perfect balance between the two. During the spring and fall months, I sleep with my back door open and don't even need a screen. It is really just lovely. Now for the food. Specific foods may come to mind when you think of Spain, but Spain is a large country with many regions that have their own culture that comes alive in the cuisine. You might have heard that Spain is known for paella. This dish comes from the Valencia region and the dish is more officially known as paella valenciana. Every region in Spain has something to offer concerning the food. So don't think that you will go to Spain and order paella in every region. You may wanna try the different cuisines that are specific to that region and I promise you won't be disappointed. Now let's talk about the different dialects and regional languages in Spain. I didn't know until spending extensive time in Spain that although Spanish is spoken across the country, each region has their own language. For example, if you are in the Valencia region, which includes the city of Valencia, but also encompasses the surrounding areas, you would hear both the languages of Spanish and Valencian. Because my Spanish skills are still pretty basic, when people would speak in Valencian, it sounded like Spanish to me, so I had no idea that they were speaking an entirely different language. I assumed they must be pretty similar, but one time my realtor was helping me with translating and we were listening to two other people speak. His Spanish was excellent after living in Spain for 18 years but even he couldn't understand what they were saying when they spoke in Valencian. Now, let's talk for a second about the difference in the Spanish dialect. I'm originally from San Antonio, Texas, so I grew up around a lot of Spanish with a Mexican dialect. When I first arrived in Spain, I was confused as to why so many people had what sounded like a lisp. With the help of some friendly locals, I quickly got the hang of it. A good example of this is with the common word gracias, which means thank you in Spanish. Speaking Spanish in Spain, you would say your C's with a th sound. So instead of gracias, you would say gracias, gracias, gracias. Another thing about speaking Spanish in Spain is that the V's are pronounced as B's. So if you saw the word Valencia, you would change the sound of both the V and the C that is in the middle of the word. Instead of Valencia, you would say Valencia, Valencia, Valencia. Speaking of Valencia, I just want to jump back to the Fias Festival that I mentioned earlier in the video. If you are a festival person, this might just be the most amazing festival that you've never heard of. Three million people attend each year, and it is something out of a storybook and a coloring book all in one. COVID has certainly impacted festivals around the world, but as things begin to normalize in the future, you should make plans to visit the Fias Festival. With paper mache art the size of buildings, machetas, fireworks shows, light shows, and families in full Spanish dress, this is something that should be on your travel bucket list for sure. It is family friendly and just an all around wonderful place to be. It fills the entire city of Valencia and the surrounding towns. Plus you just show up. You don't have to pay for anything except for food or drinks that you may purchase while you're strolling the streets. 
I really hope you'll try to make it to a Fias Festival in the future. I've been twice now and I can't wait to go again. If you've learned something new here, I'd love for you to like the video and I hope you'll subscribe to join me on this journey or travel and adventure, build financial freedom. I can't wait to see where your dreams will take you.